Welcome everyone to a War Beast Jungle Educational. In this video, we're going to explain War Beast in detail, showing jungle rotations as well as tips and tricks for the hero to optimize your gameplay. So let's get started. We're going to start here by explaining War Beast's abilities in detail. So his first and primary ability is Summon Hellhounds. It costs 100 mana. Activate to summon two Hellhounds. Now these Hellhounds are permanent until you uh, until they either die or you respawn them with the uh, recast of the spell. So Hellhounds have 400, 425, 450, 475 health. They deal 30, 38, 46, 54 damage. They have three armor and they deal 10 bonus attack damage to neutrals have, and have a 30% chance to critical strike for 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 times the damage. And this is the big part of the uh, ability here is level 4. So when it's maxed out, the Hellhounds are invisible while not attacking. So we're going to explain that in greater detail later on. Uh, ability number 2 here is Battle Cry. has a mana cost of 50. Activate to grant yourself and all allied heroes in the game 15, 20, 25, 30 attack damage and 5, 10, 15, 20 attack speed for 20 seconds. All allied player control units in the game receive 6, 8, 10, 12 attack damage and 5, 10, 15, 20 attack speed. So this spell, it doesn't say it there, but it is a global ability. So when you activate Battle Cry, all your allied heroes as well as allied player controlled units, so anything you control or your allies control, they get this Battle Cry buff. So very, very strong as the game progresses. The third ability here is Primal Rage. Passively adds 10, 15, 20, 25 percent base damage and 2, 4, 6, 8 health regeneration to yourself and units under your control. So again, this is global. This buff only works for yourself and units under your control, not your allies. And this is going to be the second spell of the hero that you are going to want to max as quickly as possible when playing a jungle war beast. This is going to give you the sustain that you need to upkeep your health and gives you that bonus base damage to farm quickly. The last and most important ability, of course, of the Hero the Ultimate, Metamorphosis. So it does not have a mana cost. You activate it to transform for 16 seconds. And while activated, form reduces base attack time, grants a 30%, 1.6, 1.8, two time critical strike chance, you get 100, 200, 300 bonus health, as well as 600, 800, 1000 sight range at night. Unit walking and increases movement speed of self and all units you control to 550, 600, 650. So that level one, everything you control becomes hasted. Um, and the levels two and three, even stronger, breaking that haste or that normal haste barrier. So War Beast uh, becomes very, very fast to chase down. Uh, his opponents. And then he has a Staff of the Master effect there. I'll read that for good measure. Makes all effects of this ability passive except for the speed bonus. Now the Staff effect, uh, I will explain it while we're on the topic, uh, is not very uh, efficient, so don't you don't really want to look to invest into that, but uh, it is there nonetheless. And this spell is on a 65 second cooldown at the level 3. I believe it is a little bit longer at the early levels. So you get to transform for 16 seconds um, with a roughly uh, 50 second downtime. So that is the hero's abilities in detail. So I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Warbeast when you want to uh, pick him up in your games and what he's good and bad uh, or, or what he does well and what he does not do well. So the strengths of the hero is he is very, very good at split pushing. Um, he's good at playing away from his team, going into lanes and pushing those towers very, very quickly if he's left unattended. The wolves uh, are very good for scouting. They are invisible at the level four. You can place them all around the map, acting like moving wards for your team and information to avoid ganks and set up ganks. So very, very strong if you're able to scout with the wolves. The wolves also can act independently to attack creeps and heroes around the map. So without you being 
near the wolves. There is no leash on the wolves, so uh, you're able to farm with them very, very efficiently. They do deal lots of damage, so you're able to farm in two places at once. You can also use the wolves to block neutral camps if you place them in the camp radius before the timer respawns they will block the neutral camps from respawning so uh, a nice trick there um, the global battle cry effect for team fights so you actually don't need to be present to be having an effect in team fights so um, you will buff up your allies when they go to team fight without you that makes this hero very very uh, prevalent throughout the uh, all courses of the game having the battle cry from across the map and when you are joining those engagements with your team or for solo pickoffs the metamorphosis you become hasted so you are very strong at chasing down low mobility opponents by being able to run at them more or less hasted so those are some of the strengths of war beast and what he is very good at now let's talk about some of the weaknesses of the hero so before you get something like a shrunken head, being able to team fight with your team very effectively is very hard. Uh, it is very easy to kite the war beast and stun him down uh, and just delay his ulti form. Because once his ulti form is out, it's more or less very easy to avoid war beast. He's not very fast without that metamorphosis. So uh, you are going to be needing that shrunken head almost always. Um, heavy crowd control and mobility stopping opponents are very good against war beast because he he does not have lockdown for himself he does rely on either items for lockdown or teammates um, so crowd control becomes an issue for him because he is an auto attack uh, hero and heroes that stop your mobility heroes like tempest and chronos are some examples they freeze you in place so you're not able to get those auto attacks off um, some other examples would be heroes that stop your mobility like a blood hunter or uh, a pharaoh walling you in place so you're not able to utilize that haste that you get from the metamorphosis another one would be something like a blitz he is a hero that can break the haste barrier so War base, you typically think of being faster than your opponent, Blitz, able to not only speed up himself, but allies, so it becomes very difficult to chase down uh, opponents when you play against a hero like Blitz. So, War base, he needs lockdown from his teammates to provide him that chance to auto-attack and deal his damage. So, he needs lockdown in his team, that is one of his weaknesses. So... Overall, those are the strengths and weaknesses that come to mind. And uh, if you see those conditions uh, in your game, the strengths, that's when you want to pick them up. And the weaknesses, that's when you want to avoid picking up a war beast in your game. So now that we've explained the hero's abilities as well as some of his strengths and weaknesses, I think it's time we can get into a practice mode game and we can start going over some of those jungle rotations uh, in the early stages of the game. I think for the sake of time, we will we'll keep it to around maybe the first 7 to 10 minutes of jungling, just so you guys can get the idea of what's a good rotation um, to do with the War Beast uh, in the early stages of the game. So we'll go ahead, we'll select our hero here. We'll get into the game. <clears throat> we are ready. So... We actually start here with the 3,000 gold. We're going to need to uh, set that to the basic starting gold. We will remove that. So we're going to want to buy these items. We're going to spawn wolves. And we're going to go over the key bindings here. So I have my hero and wolves in one. Both my wolves in two. And then I bind one wolf to four and one wolf to five. So I can individually micro them. So what we want to do is we want to send one wolf here and one wolf here because we're going to be jungling in our jungle. And what this does is we're going to be scouting to see if any enemies are coming to block our camps. And also importantly, we're going to save at least 100 gold in the bank to be able to purchase Wards of Revelation if the occasion arises. So like some junglers, you want to cut some trees to make pathways easier. Right here, I'll cut a tree so I can walk through this camp. We're going to send the wolves here and make sure we see no enemies coming. 
Obviously, now this is practice mode. There's not going to be any enemies, but this is uh, good practice here, as we'll see. If anyone comes into the jungle, either here or here, um, or here, to try to block our camps. So we'll cut this tree here as well. Now, what you could do, if I was a little bit more focused, is I would send my wolves up to here, and I would pull the lane for my offlaner. I would have a, a solo lane up here in the offlane and two uh, heroes in my short lane. Uh, making sure that my carry gets good farm. So I would pull the creeps at about nine seconds here, and I would drag them through the jungle to the river, where I would tell my offlaner to meet them here, and then I would resummon. Uh, I would resummon the wolves. So for the sake of for the sake of the replay or the uh, practice here, I will resummon my wolves. So the creeps would be here. My ally would get them. I would resummon. I'm going to make sure here to tank with my hero. This is why we buy the blights. So we're going to start using the blights. We want the wolves to stay healthy on HP. We're going to split the tanking now. We always start on the medium camp, and I'll explain to you why we do that in a second here. So we let the wolves finish it. We start running. And the reason we start on the medium is because we want to stack this easy camp. Now, we're not going to kill it two at once. We're going to pull it out just enough so that it respawns and we are going to now kill the easy camp stack try to make sure we micro our wolves to keep them alive as long as possible ideally i want to eat another tree here so we're going to have to let the wolves uh die and we will resummon them you want to focus down the creeps so that they die as quickly as possible we buy our ring of the teacher that's always going to be our first item and we get that right after we kill uh, the camp. We scout the hard camp here. That is not a camp we want to farm. It's Catman's. So we're going to kill that later when we get a little stronger. We go back to the medium here. Resummon the wolves. I can use my mana pot now. Make sure we micro our dogs. So we have the keybinds, four or five. We see which dog is getting low. We pull it back. Okay, so right now I could either kill this or I could go to the rune. So it's very important to camp runes for your mid laner. So here we're going to see an in, in, invisibility rune. I would say, hey, mid laner, do you have bottle? He would say, no, go ahead, pick it up. So I pick it up. Now my hero is not very good at ganking, so I'm just going to go back to farming. And he's probably got close to enough gold for a bottle, but he didn't want the rune. So we go ahead and take it. Now here's what we do to farm Vagabonds. We're going to send the two dogs here to tank, and we keep our hero back farming another camp. This creep is going to get very low. I miss micro there. But what we want to do is we want to keep at least one wolf and our hero alive to kill this Vagabond leader so he does not use the spell. And then we will resummon dogs to continue farming. And we go to the medium camp now. Kill this one. Pull the wolf back. We're going to continue to level up Primal Rage because it gives us health regen and base damage so we farm quicker. So we kill this just in time for it to respawn. We can go over to the hard camp now. We're level 4. We pull back one wolf. We start killing the catman. I let one of the wolves tank here. I even throw the hatchet. It dies. I bring the next wolf over. We're going to kill this catman before we resummon the wolves again. So we take a couple of hits here. And we resummon. You could ferry yourself out regen here if you don't feel safe. But more likely than not, you're not going to get roamed here. So we're just going to stay on low health and regen up. Micro the wolf back here. I should let that high HP wolf tank a little bit because the wolves do get the regen as well. So I'm a little bit behind. I should be around level 5 by 3.5 minutes. So if I don't camp the rune, I would be farming a little bit faster. But we sacrificed a little bit of uh, XP to control the uh, early pace of the game for our mid laner. So here, I would probably tell my support in short lane to go camp the rune so I can continue farming. We're level 5 here at 4 minutes, which is just fine. I'm going to kill the Skelly King. And uh, right now, I have the decision if I want to go into a Whispering Helm or an Alchemist Bones, which are my two preferred uh, item builds. So for the sake of uh, what I usually like to do, I'll save up for Alchemist Bones. And... Uh, after we finish the jungle rotation, I will explain the item choices when you go which item builds. 
So for now, we're just going to be saving up the 1200 gold for, um, I believe it's called Alacrity Band. Yeah. So we hit level six here, under five minutes. We can choose to gank or continue to keep farming. I want to try to kill this before uh, camp uh, respawns. So what I might do here is I might just pull this one little creep back a bit, make sure it's outside the ring, and I get it to respawn. If you don't do that, it's not the end of the world, but it is very nice to get the camps to respawn when you can. So we always kill the Vulture Lord first because he gives armor to everything else. So he makes everything else die slower. Another thing about Warbase is that he's not very good at taking stacks, so we don't really want to be stacking the jungle. Um, we want to be killing single camps as often as possible. So if your support is moving into the jungle and stacking these camps, you want to make sure to communicate to him uh, not to stack those camps because you will have uh, trouble farming the, the hard camps specifically if they're stacked. The spells from the creeps will be very difficult to uh, keep your wolves alive. So we're going to hit level 7 here in a sec. So again, there... You can gank at any point in time. I think I can get this to not... Okay, I messed up there. So I should have kept one of the wolves back not to get the spell off. So we're almost at our alchemist bones. We should get the alchemist bones by around 7 minutes. If we set up a kill and we don't die, we'll probably have the alch bones by uh, closer to 6.5. So yeah, unfortunately letting the vagabond use his spell there. I have to wait a little bit for my wolves to come back. But we're going to kill this here, and then we will go to the hard camp. We've got pretty good spawns for the most part. We haven't had to avoid any Minotaur stuns. We did have a Catman in one Vagamon camp though. So we get the Alchemist Bones. I'll kill these and get gold for a TP. Sometimes we want to TP to uh, Long Lane, for example, if they dive our suicide and we think we can get a return kill. So we'll kill this. And again, if your team needs you to camp runes, by all means, camp the runes when you feel necessary. You can sometimes get refreshment runes to help you with your mana. We're going to go ahead and use the alchemist bones here on the big creep. Very important to use it on the big creep. We want to get that level 16 as quickly as possible, where we have the lower uh, cooldown on the ultimate. So the goal with the alchemist bones is to get that level 16 very, very quickly, as well as give us that enhanced farming speed to transition to late game. So I'll show you guys for about another level or two here, but we've pretty much done all of the early game jungling. Uh, we're level eight before eight minutes. We should get almost level nine here. Pull back one of the wolves. I can even send this wolf over to here. It will not trigger. So we kill just like this. We always have all the units attacking. We buy boots and we don't really need to touch these two camps because we want our short lane to be able to utilize pulling. Pulling is very, very strong. So we pretty much just farm these four camps. Uh, this rune wouldn't be here normally, but we'll say it was the 8 minute rune. We pick it up. Uh, we're not going to use it to farm because we'll just say that that rune wasn't there. But uh, that is for the most part the jungle rotation. Here's a minotaur camp. So I would send my two wolves, make sure my hero doesn't aggro the stomp. Could even throw my hatchet. Pull this one back a little bit. Whoop. Okay, so I missed micro there. I meant to attack this Gotar. It's not the end of the world right now because I'm strong enough that the stomp doesn't matter too much. But as you can see, even I make mistakes all the time when I'm uh, not entirely focused on what I'm doing. But it is good practice to get used to uh, not making the hard camps use their abilities. So we have our alchemist bones coming up in four seconds. We'll kill the small creeps here. And uh, we'll make sure the wolves don't die. We'll use the bones. And then I probably could stack this one in time. Okay, so I got that one to stack in time. When you can to make stacks. It, it, when you have the alchemist bones charges up, you can stack the hard caps and just alch bone one of the big creeps. And it is still manageable to... Uh, kill those creeps. So we're gonna go into Steam Boots next. I pull back the low HP dog. Kill the goat. Uh, kill the Minotaur here. Then bring the second wolf back to attack. So we're level 10 under 10 minutes. So that's 
pretty good. Now we have the battle cry. We can start battle crying our teammates whenever they go to take fights. So we pay attention to the map. It does have a high cooldown early levels, but it goes down to uh, 40 seconds at level four. So we'll be able to spam it a lot more. And then we would pick up the full steam boots. And this is the part where we would start to, uh, I did it again because I'm talking. I can't multitask for some reason. Um, once we get the steam boots, this is where we will start sending our dogs to the other jungle. And depending on whether they have a jungler or not, we will have them farm uh, the camps accordingly. The, your hero is strong enough now to uh, farm the camps without the wolves, but you will farm a little bit slower. But the trade-off is you are going to be farming in two places at once and stealing resources from the enemies. So I want to farm mediums and hard camps as much as possible. They give the most amount of gold and value. So I make sure my wolves aren't going to be dying here and we will kill that medium camp then we'll send it over to the hard camp now if they were stacked I wouldn't be able to take these of course because they would die too quickly but uh, we make sure that the wolves don't die I wouldn't normally outpose that but we're gonna stop jungling here in a second and then another trick you can do is put the wolves here in the camps to prevent the jungle camps from respawning. So that is the first 10 or so minutes of jungling with war beasts. Now, as I pointed out, of course, you would want to be using your ultimate uh, anytime after level six, if you think you can get a kill either in the mid lane or the short lane with your teammates, you can go for it. If you see them diving, the, the tower diving your suicide and your suicide can survive, you pour it in, you use metamorphosis, you go for a counter kill. Very, very acceptable uh, plays. So now I want to talk about the different item choices that you can make as a war beast. So in this scenario here, we were going the alchemist bones. I would continue that with abyssal skull. I think I need to do the item spawner here. So I would buy a Bissell, Bissell Skull. So we get rid of the Ring of the Teacher. We would have a Bissell Skull. Our next item would be Shrunken Head, most likely. And then a Brutalizer. So with these items, you have good attack speed between Steam Boots and a Bissell Skull to get Brutalizer procs to lock down the enemy hero you're killing, as well as the Shungen had to run into team fights without getting crowd controlled for the most part. So this is how we would build more so a hard carry war beast. Uh, so late, later on we would build into items such as demonic breastplate. Um, and if you see lots of void talismans, and by lots I mean two or more, we would sell the alchemist bones and we would get Harkon's blade. So these items here, demonic, kind of replacing that alchemist bones for attack speed. The Harkon's blade, you will deal so much damage when they pop void talismans. So this is a very very strong um, carry build. Um, now I want to show you guys the other build, which would be. Um, so we'll drop the shunken head here. Disable Fog War for a sec. So the other item build would be um, Whispering Helm. So instead of Alchemist Bones, we would buy Whispering Helm. Then we would go into a Puzzle Box. So I don't know. We would want this to be level 3. I don't know if I can make it level 3 or not. But we'll just say it's level 3. And then we would go into... Uh, we could go into Demonic Breastplate. We would go into Auras here. Uh, you could buy an Abyssal Skull. You don't need to since you have the Whispering Helm, but the Abyssal is good for um, we would go Shrunken, and more likely than not, we would go Brutalizer. So, we would spawn the Puzzle Box. Uh, and this is... We'll just say for the sake of it, we don't have a Shrunken. This is more of a ganking... Uh, this is more of a ganking and split pushing item build. We're able to kill towers with Puzzle Box and demonic very very easily uh, let's let's just say we also have an abyssal skull in here 
um, for the sake of it being a really good aura for pushing and fighting. So we have Abyssal, Demonic, and Puzzle Box, ideally level 3 of course. This is very good for ganking and split pushing as I said. The other build that I showed you was a team fighting and hard carry style of build. So depending on your team's composition, you want to decide what item build you want to go for um, in any specific game. So here we have the Whispering Helm. I'm going to take over a Skeleton King. I want to show you guys how I keybind when I have a puzzle box as well as a Whispering Helm creep. So I told you how I keybind without any other units. So we're going to spawn our wolves here. I put everything in control 1. So when I run at people, I just right click them. I'll spawn the puzzle box too for the sake of it. So we still have wolves in 2. We put Skeleton King in 3. And then we put puzzle box in four and the first one will always be the mana burn creep so when i go to kill this vagabond leader i press r w i rip with three and mana burn with four it dies very very quickly as you can see but that's the uh order of operations there grip right click everything mana burn continue right clicking everything so boom 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 it's very very fast you get used to the keybinds the more you practice it and then if I ever want to move my hero back, I use F1. So I have F1 for my hero, all my units in control 1, wolves in control 2, skeleton king in 3, 4, which you can't see right now, I would have to refresh, is puzzle box. So if I click 4, I have puzzle box. And 5 is still my one doggo. Um, so I don't have the, the other doggo individually bound. I don't really like to go more than 5 hockeys, but if you can reach with your hands, you can go to 6. Do five and six as individual doggos. So here, I'll put this one on six. So we have five, six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we would do ideally. Um, so that is how we keybind and decide which uh, of the two preferred item builds we can go on the war beast. Um, one other thing I want to point out. Um, is the late game item decision. So these will change depending on the game. So sometimes you'll need more lockdown. You'll want something like a sheep stick. Uh, I don't do this too often. I'm more likely or more likely than not to replace my boots at the very end with a resto stone. So restoration stone. Oh, why is it, uh, why is it disabled? It's actually disabled. Okay, that's, uh, I'm not sure why that's disabled, but you, the point of this is to use this to refresh all of our spells. So if we have a puzzle box, for example, you know, we spawn the puzzle box, we are, we'll just say we have a resto stone, we can do it again, resto stone, very good with shrunken head as well, so resto stone to replace boots late game, very, very insane because... We always want to have our metamorphosis, our shrunken head, our puzzle box, whatever it is we're working with. We always want to have it up again so that we can continue to uh, win those team fights. Um, what else here? We have, so we talked about Harkon's Blade. So Savage Mace is an item we would get if we we're playing against Wingbow style agility carries, which is uh, very common actually. So Savage Mace would replace one of our items. So if we were doing the uh, the carry build here, oh, I can't drop that. Okay, so we'll get rid of the, the whispering. So we want the heavy brutalizer. We want shrunken head. Here, hold on. Let me. Uh, we have demonic. We have harkons. So I think we would have these items, and then we would get a uh, we would get a savage mace. That's okay that these are killing uh, jungle creeps. So this would be our item build with no boots. We'd have Savage Mace, most likely Harkons. We could not have the Harkons if they don't have voids. And then uh, we can also have something like Rift Shards. So we could have Rift Shards level 4 if we're playing against uh, Strength Heroes with lots of H uh, a high HP pool. So Rift Shards. And Savage Mace, these are very dependent on what our opponent is doing. Same with the Harkon's Blade. If they have voids, we buy Harkon's Blade. Restoration Stone is very good as a 5th or 6th item in almost all cases because, as I pointed out, refreshing the ultimate, the shrunken, the puzzle box, whatever the item build is we're going for. Uh, Symbol of Rage and Geometer's Bane are very situational. 
So symbol of rage would be if we're fighting against another carry that we really have to go toe to toe with that life steals a lot, and we want to replace, uh, we would replace the whispering or the, uh, excuse me, the abyssal skull late game with the whispering helm. Uh, I had a whispering helm somewhere. Anyway, the point is we would pick up the whispering helm. We would uh, upgrade it into a symbol. Very very strong late game geometer Spain, The only practical scenario i could tell you to buy this item would be against the keeper of the forest who roots us in place and stops us from auto attacking so if we play against a refresher stone keeper of the forest we would want both a shrunken head and a geometer's vein so something you might ask me is wig why don't you have shield breaker here so shield breaker it is very strong don't get me wrong but the main reason why we don't get shield breaker is because we invest a lot of gold we invest 4600 gold to get it to level three it has a power spike where you get a lot of damage and a lot of negative armor on your target. You can also use it to push towers. So it does have uses. But the reasoning we don't like Shield Breaker is because the Void Talisman is almost inevitable that it will be picked up by the opponent. And when they pick it up, they start to pick it up in pairs and trios. And if we have two and three opponents with um, with Void Talismans, the Shield Breaker will not help us at all. It's going to delay our Harkon's Blade by way too long so we are going to want to emphasize on those other items the brutalizers the demonics and then getting into the harkon's blade when necessary the earlier you see the voids the earlier you're going to need those harkon's blades so shield breaker it is strong but there are two uh, more often than not um it ends up becoming an issue of not being able to farm the harkon's blade in time so the shield breaker, for me at least, does not make the cut. Um, another choice you could look to build into is something like a Lex Talionis uh, to upgrade your Ring of the Teacher if you don't want to go into an Abyssal Skull um, for that particular game. So you could go something like a Lex Talionis with a Whispering Helm and a Puzzle Box, and the Lex Talionis gives minus five armor. So if you have a Puzzle Box and your Wolves with Battle Cry, and you have Lex Talionis, you, you need to make sure that you don't need that life steal, of course, but you will kill people very, very quickly. So Lex Talionis is a viable pickup, but uh, late game, you will end up having to replace it. So that is why I won't buy it um, more often than not. I like to play for the late game and make sure I secure myself um, the later stages of the game. So that is the item choices depending on the game all the different item builds that are very very strong on war beast um so tips and tricks for the hero we talked about how to not trigger the hard camp abilities by splitting oh let me get rid of that by uh getting rid of the uh so we'll kill this and then we'll respawn it should spawn something uh, let's see here, spawn creeps? Oh, spawn neutrals. Okay, so I talked about how to not get the creeps to spawn. So let's let's say we want to uh, let's say we want to uh, not we want to use our hero to farm this and one wolf. So we pull one of the wolves back. We farm with just our hero and our wolf, and then we put this wolf over here. We farm like that. So that's how we farm the hard camps without getting the spells to trigger. I talked about when you start to send the wolves to the enemy jungle. So you have steam boots, um, alchemist bones, and you could be either at abyssal or not at abyssal yet. You're usually around level level nine or ten, and you can start farming in two places at once. And then as well, you want to split up the wolves. Let's just say these two camps were dead. Uh, neutrals kill. So we put the has been slain. we kill the or kill the <laughs> we put the wolves here in the camps and the clock would reach uh, 24. So we'll speed up the clock a little bit. Speed up the clock, put it back down. 24 minutes comes around and boom, our opponent does not have a hard camp and a medium camp to spawn. We can now move the wolves and go farm another camp in their jungle. So we remove their resources as well as giving ourselves extra gold so we really starve the enemy uh, of gold and experience another trick you can do is to scout with the wolves so we will disable fog of war here this is the vision we would see 
uh, regularly. Okay, so the wolf wouldn't be in the tower, but here we'll put the wolf on the hill. We see the mid lane tower. We can see if anyone ports. We can send one doggo over to Congor. And, you know, wolves can destroy runes and, and stuff and such. Make sure their mid doesn't get the rune if we're not going to go for it. We have one wolf scouting here. We have one wolf scouting here. Oh, hello. Enemies are doing Congor. Let's make sure we give our team information whether we want to take this fight or avoid and do something else. Maybe even get lucky and kill a token so that they can't get it. Uh, those are some nice ways to use the wolves in the mid and late game. So ideally you would have a secondary core in your team somebody who's playing short lane uh, something like a puppet master comes to mind or a doctor repulsor very aggressive carry we give them battle cry they go for kills and we scout for them so that they can get their initiation on so that is a very big plus to the war beast he has two movable wards throughout all stages of the game forcing our opponents to invest in lots of counter wards and bound eyes eventually to prevent this uh, doggo we'll call it doggo abuse because it's very very strong so that is going to do it i think for uh the war based jungle educational i didn't do the hellborn side it's more or less the same thing uh rotation wise you do the same uh you do the same way i rotated here just on the opposite jungle so for the sake of time we're not going to show you that um, as it's essentially the same thing um, but that is going to do it for the jungle educational um, I, I am planning actually to do a part two I want to uh, in another video go over uh, a replay for you guys so if you're interested in that make sure to tune into that hopefully coming soon we'll, we'll pull up a replay we'll analyze the game and I'll explain to you my decisions in real time what we're doing um, in that match specifically so hopefully that'll explain a little bit better because there will be actually there will actually be opponents as well as teammates in the game so that will help to explain my decision making throughout all stages of the game so if you enjoy the educational please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if possible and i will be as i said doing a part two where i analyze a, um, a replay or two explaining decisions throughout the match so thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the educational and I'll see you guys in the next one.